So friends, welcome again. This is Amritanshu Bajpayee and I am taking you forward from the point where I had left. In the previous video, I was just discussing with you regarding the blink facility. There we had seen we had two types of objects which we had spotted moving as far as our current image set is concerned. So what I am doing is let me blink it again and here it is the point where we had left after seeing the properties after analyzing the properties also but now after you have done the analysis what next the next part is you have to identify the object as it is that is what type of an object is there which you have spotted in your image set now as you can see there are two basic types of objects that can be seen moving in fact there are three objects which are seen moving this one object it goes just out of the frame let me stop the video and here it is s3215 magnitude 20.7 k15xy4l magnitude 20.4 and this is an unknown object which is seemingly moving in your image set now as i had told you last time that there are different type of objects that you will be seeing moving in your image set now out of those type of the objects a few are present right now in front of our screen so before discussing the nomenclature and all the other things let me describe in brief in a couple of minutes time regarding the type of the objects that may be present in front of you now you see in front of you as you can see let me resume the blinking facility and let me resume the movement part also so what you see in front of you the things that you are seeing all together in front of you is regarding the movement of the different objects now let me take it case by case so let me stop blinking it again so that both are visible now see first of all this is a seven character designation if you can clearly see let me zoom it on k15 xy4l this is a seven character designation that is present in front of you for an object then the second type of the nomenclature that you will be seeing in front of you is this one small s followed by four digits s3215 in the bracket is written 20.7 it's the magnitude so this there are two types of objects right now which we can see as far as namings are concerned one is a seven character designation and one is a five character designation in this five character designation there will be a few variations also that sometimes you may be seeing i will tell you let me go it by let me go back to that particular five character designation let me zoom in further so that you have got a more clear view of the object now this is what i was talking about this five character designation of or a five letter designation so in this five letter designation sometimes the first alphabet that you are seeing as a small s here sorry a small s here it can be a capital alphabet also so it can be an upper case letter or a lower case letter which will be followed by a four digit code also sometimes it can very well be possible that there isn't any alphabet at all or in that five character designation all the five characters are digits say for example 0 0 1 2 so that can also be really possible or in fact it is a feasible possibility so when you go uh, when you proceed on further with the analysis of the sets in the course of your uh, trist with this astrometrica software and image analysis on international astronomical search collaboration platform you will be seeing more and more types of objects with five character designations also but what is the fundamental difference between this five character designation as well as the seven character designation objects let me zoom it out and try to bring both the objects in a single frame here both of them are so what i will tell you objects with seven character designations they are the provisional objects that is they have already been confirmed by someone and they are provisionally denoted this is a provisional designation that has been provided to this seven lettered objects 
Now coming to this five lettered objects or five character designations. These are numbered designations as opposed to this seven letter designations. So this seven character designations, they are provisional objects and this five character designation objects are the numbered objects. So they are still numbered. They have not been given with the provisional designations. And what you can say the letter or a number combination, it is a packed shorthand form in Astrometrica. So it is a shorthand form of Astrometrica. And then apart from these two objects, when we blink it after known object overlay, there will be a few objects which will be identified moving. If you see the properties also, as you can see, this is an object moving in this particular uh, grid row and column grid. Now this one is object which is moving, which has not got any name at all. It means it is an unknown, unidentified object which will be your original discovery. So, now the thing is, what you have to take as a caution into your mind. Let me stop the blinking. Yes. So, while providing the nomenclature for your team, whether it is a seven letter object or a five letter object designation, you do not have to provide your team designation. While naming the object in the object identification part, which we will be dealing right now, what you have to take care of is you leave the object designation as it is, whether it is a seven designation object for a provisional object or a five letter designation, which is an, a numbered designation for a particular object. Now, this letter number combination I am again repeating is a packed or shorthand form in Astrometrica. So these are basically shorthand forms and you have to take care of them basically. So you leave them as it is. So and you have got your full claims over this unverified, unidentified, unknown object after you analyze it. If everything falls into foray, uh, sorry, if everything falls into your uh, particular parametric uh, limit, you can very well name or identify that object as your team object. So now let's resume from where we had left after this short discussion on different types of objects and their nomenclature. So since this particular object of five letter designation, it was available only in one frame, we are just going to neglect it. We are not going to see it. Now coming back to this seven letter designation, it was a perfect designation. So here is image one. I am just I am doing what I am doing is stopping the blinking, bringing my cross wire here and we had already analyzed the properties of magnitude R, SNR value 8.6 and the point spread function PSF fit graph all. So everything has already been analyzed and so we are not going to spend much time over it. So what we are going to do is just click over the object designation. Now in the object designation, what you will see you will see a list of objects, a bunch of objects with their designation, the packed name, the right ascension and the declination and the magnitude, the speed and all the things they are basically being mentioned in order of the increasing distance. So you select the object which has the closest distance. That is if it is 0 0.0 and 0, 0 0.0 it means the object is the same one. So you go for the nearest one and here in the uppermost portion, it is the one we click OK. We do not change the name here. No change should be done. You accept the object as it is. Now, once you accept the object, if you go to the MPC report file, here is the line in which that object is being generated as your MPC report part. Now, you move to the next frame. Repeat the same procedure. Go to that object. Make your cursor the crossbar. Go for the object designation click over it and see the nearest object. Go for the nearest object. Since it is a preliminary find already, so don't change the seven lettered designation. It is a provisional designation that has been provided. Just accept it. Move it to the third frame where it is available. Go for it. And we had told that in spite of SNR 4.7, we more, the, uh, more so ever we are going to consider it because of the identification of the rest of the properties, accept it. Don't change the designation again, accept it again. Now you see, continue to see the change also, observe the change. 
three frames we have identified the object and in all the three frames it has been reflected correspondingly in the MPC report also. Now you move to the last frame, image number four, put the crosswire over the same object, go for the object designation and in that object designation what you are seeing is again check for the nearest object, click OK, simulated provisional designation, don't change the name except as it is and now you see the change. View MPC report. Now you view the MPC report. All the four frames have been listed in this MPC report correspondingly after their identification. But the find is not over. The story is not over. Start blinking. Search for another object if it is there. Here it is. This is the moving object. I am stopping the blinking. Going back to image one. So what I am doing is just put my crosswire here. And what we see here is Remember, the SNR value is 8.7, capital R value is 20.8. So, for a time being, I am going to take you to the revision part. Note down this R value, SNR is acceptable, PSF graph is also acceptable. Now, we will see SNRs and variation of R in the other images also. Note down R 20.8 somewhere. Move to image number 2. <coughs> Here it comes. R value is 20.4. It has got a variation of 0.4 from the previous one. SNR is 7.8. Very well acceptable. Graphs are also good. Go to the third frame. Here it comes. Now put the crosswire again over the object. 20.4. And so SNR is 6.4. Acceptable. Reject. Click, click on the reject again. Now move to the fourth frame. After going to the fourth frame, it goes behind the plate. That is no observation can be made. So this object is available in three frames, an unknown, unidentified object. You give your team designation exclusively for this object. So what we are going to do is bringing back to image number one, putting on the crosswire. Now you see the variation in the R we have already seen. The minimum value is 20.4, maximum value is 20.8. The total variation was 0.4, which is less than one. So this fluctuation is within the permissible range. Now what you have to do is Click over the object range, object designation, sorry. Now here it comes. What I will tell you is, you just remember the previous object, if you see, it was the same packed name that was being present. But you see the distance. Now the distance is different. Now it means that this particular object K15 XY4L is at this much distance in terms of right ascension and declination from this particular object. So, you have, to, uh, it means that this object is different from the previous one because for the previous one, it was 0 0.01, 0, uh, 0, 0.0 that was being showing. So, it means that both these objects are different. Now, you select the nearest object. As we can gauge, the nearest object is the uppermost one only. We click OK. And here, what you have to do is, you exclusively provide your name or your team's name. Now, what you do is, for example, I have chosen my team designation as seven letter designation in which the first three should be alphabets followed by four numbers. So, I have chosen my team code as IND in capitals. So, I am using IND followed by the number of the find. So, since this is the first object for my discovery, I will be using 0001, IND 0001, I accept it. Now, once I accept it, let me see any change in MPC report. Yes, this addition is being reflected in my MPC report in this line also. So, now let's move to the next frame. I am going to the next frame. In the next frame again, I am putting my cross wire over the moving object. Going for the object designation, everything is already being analyzed. All the properties are already being seen. So, no need to worry about it. Nothing at all. So, click just OK and you give the team designation IND 0001. Now you see, be very, very careful. Don't commit any mistake. Any mistake committed, you cannot edit out the MPC report. You have to do the entire labor again. So now go to image number three, move it a bit further and go for the object designation as all the properties are already analyzed. Select the nearest object, go for it. Since it was an unidentified object, you can put your team code as you had had talked about. This is a simulator designation again. Accept it. Now, see for image number 4. 
it goes beyond the plate. So, not possible. So, what we are going to see is, this is the MPC report that comes into play. Now, these are the three lines for our unknown object and these are the four lines for our known object. Now, the story is not yet over. Start blinking and now what you do is, you proceed to the next square. In this manner, you proceed, scan it manually, make it a bit zoom out so that you are able to see the entire frame. Just wait for a second. Differentiate between a real moving object and an object which is giving you an, a sense of a motion but it actually is not moving. So, these moving objects, what is the difference between moving and those who are giving you a sense of movement? Now, these moving objects will really seem moving. Or in lighter words, we can so they will be uh, we can say, say that they will be seen as if they are jumping. They will be changing their x and y coordinates very very drastically. Now, if anything and anyone that comes into your mind regarding a moving object, what you have to see is the movement, the path. It should be on a line, on a linear movement, and uh, the movement from the course. Uh, the course of the movement from image 1 to image 2 to image 3 to image 4, it should not change the direction. It should be unidirectional and also apart from being unidirectional, the fluctuation in the magnitude should not be there. More or less, apparently it should be same only and also you can see it should not uh, violate any laws or any provisions that we have specified for being a, and a list in the astrometrica. So, all these things we have to take care into our mind. Now, select the MPC report. Now, control plus C with the help of this control plus C, you copy this MPC report, you minimize everything and what after you do, what do you do after minimization is, you go to your team account where you have logged in already, you select the image set which is there, which you had been analyzing and after the image set analysis, you select it, you click over the citizen scientist name, you have clicked over the citizen scientist name, you right click over it, you paste your MPC report which you have already selected and after pasting your MPC report, you submit the report and a message will be generated, report submitted successfully. So, this is what the entire process of submission is all about and I hope that this entire nomenclature part which is a very very crucial part will have become clear to all my friends. So, we shall be continuing with a sample set case again in the coming video. Apart from that, in the coming videos, uh, coming series of the video, we shall also be discussing sometimes in your image analysis, you will not get any object moving at all. So, in that case, if there is no moving object that is there or there are moving objects, but you cannot find any property in your parametrical range so that you can specify it as a true signature, what to do and how to proceed out with the MPC report generation and submission. Hope that everything has gone clear with you all. Thanks for watching this video.